Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name's Jason Newland and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And please subscribe to this podcast. Now, I'd like to talk about something that's very current in the news. I'm not going to talk about the actual thing, but this is related to that actual thing. And that is the coronavirus. And more generally, common cold, or even more generally than that, germs, um, people sneezing and coughing, and you know, that stuff which. For a long time, I have found myself getting anxious when I'm around people that are sneezing and coughing. And especially on public transport, when it's sort of a confined space. So, that's what I was going to talk about, and I've got a few a few ideas and some things that I've done in the past that I find help. I have actually made recordings in the past on this subject. I can't, I can't remember where. It's in the self-help um, or self-development hypnosis podcast. But... And there's hundreds of them in there. They're, they're all... Their things get lost. I've done so many recordings. Stuff gets lost in the mess of uh, information. But... I suppose I just wanted to address it. Address... Um, every winter. Well, not just the winter, but especially kind of this... It's, uh, what is it, March now. But this period of the year, when it's cold, uh, being on a bus, I travel on buses, I don't, I don't travel on trains too much these days. Um, but if I need to get somewhere, I live in the middle of nowhere, so I have to get a, a bus, really. And being around people that are sneezing and coughing and, I really, I, it's almost like my stress levels, you know the, what's that thing with the temperature gauge, and you see it like in cartoons where it just like, uh, the mercury rises and suddenly it just pops, I almost feel like that's what's happening inside me, and there's, I found a few ways to ease it over the years um, but from another angle I suppose I come to it I come from different angles the first angle is there's a le- there's a legitimate reason to not want to be around someone that's sneezing and coughing generally Because it's not nice having a cold. It's, hard, it's it's not a nice experience, is it? We've all had colds, and it's natural to have a cold, but it's not particularly pleasant. I've had chest infections and colds that were just awful. But you know, it's it's just part of part of being alive, isn't it? So, you know, it makes sense, logical sense, to keep away as much as possible from those people that are sneezing. 
And that's all coming into play now. All my, not my ideas, but the way I used to think for years. Now with this coronavirus, they've actually got adverts on television and on the radio and in the papers and telling people to do exactly what I've always done. in order to avoid uh, catching this stuff and spreading this stuff. Now, I've always done this with a common cold. And generally, when I get home, always, and this is what long before the coronavirus, this is all year round, when I get home, if I've touched something in public, whether I've been to the garage, garage door, um, whatever if I've been you know to the petrol station I mean or if I've been on the bus I come in and I wash my hands with soap and hot water well not too hot but you know I wash my hands it's something I've always done for years and years and years so that's just and now we're being told well make sure you wash your hands and stuff that I thought like, you know, a four-year-old child would be able to know to do. But, I, you know, I've been in enough public toilets to know that people don't always wash their hands. You know, it's, it's, I don't know how, but it's amazing how people can walk out of a, a toilet when they've clearly been to number two and then just walk out without even go near the sink that's, that's phenomenal I can't get my head around that but people do so you know, I'm not this recording for me it's not about increasing the the stress of germs and stuff but the government the society has not done themselves any favours by all these touch screens in supermarkets, McDonald's, various places. Even the doctor's surgery has a touch screen that everyone needs to touch to book themselves into the appointment they've made, the doctor's surgery. So people are walking in there with all kinds of diseases, illnesses, and touching that screen and all sharing their germs as well as sitting in a room together. So, that stuff plays on my mind. So this is what I do. This is how I kind of deal with it. First of all, I refuse to touch those screens. Don't touch them. McDonald's, I don't use McDonald's very often, but if I do, I go up to the counter and I pay. I order the food and I pay for it. I don't use self-service tills in supermarkets. I go to the place where they, you know, I'm paying, where the they got a cashier. I know not everybody is willing to do what I do, but it's a choice I choose. And even if it means waiting longer, I'll do it. In a doctor's surgery, I will not touch that screen. I will go up, and if they say to me. And they haven't yet, but if they was to say, you have to book in on the screen, I said, sorry, I'm dyslexic. Or I will say, I can't read. And I'm not mocking people that can't read or dyslexic at all. I hope you realise that. I will say whatever is necessary for me to not touch that screen. What I'll probably say is, sorry, I have a phobia of germs. I do not touch screens that are shared by people with other illnesses and I realise this you know I've, the, <laughs> it needs a bit more gentleness probably than the way I just said it because people also are listening they're not going to feel very nice that people in the waiting room thinking he's just said that I've got a disease you know, so that's not very nice, I suppose. And also the people working in the doctor's surgery. Um, 
if you if you're lucky enough to have friendly ones then you don't really want to annoy them you know it's uh so maybe not that route of not being rude but just I can't touch the screen sorry I won't touch the screen so I don't touch any of those sherry screens the only time I had no choice was in a job centre because there was literally no other option they had the computer big computer screens that you touch no other option the other no other option is Argos catalog shop where you go in you have to touch a screen unless you order it online it's a you know basically they're spreading they're I'm sure they're not they're not doing it on purpose but they are spreading uh, the germs by getting people to touch the same little bit of screen so there's the logical side of it that's logical it's obvious that and now the government are coming out and actually acknowledging that stuff telling people to be careful telling telling the population to wash their hands and I just find it funny that people need to be told to wash their hands but the population does need to be told apparently so this we know there's germs everywhere but most of them are not harmful so here even though I've gone on a I've, I don't I'm not here to make it worse but I found the constant bombardment of press media attention on the coronavirus uh, that's been in and it's been so massive it's just non-stop it's non-stop and the only way to avoid it would be to not watch television or listen to the radio or go online it'd be you know so there's no way to avoid it unless I just sit here looking at the wall so here's some techniques that I've used in the past to combat my own I guess self importance my own a bit of paranoia my stress levels you know first of all if someone's sneezing near you they're not sneezing at you they're not coughing at you they're not doing it to annoy you they're not doing it to give you a lurgy or you know whatever they've got that's something worth remembering so if they're coughing and sneezing it's got nothing to do with you you know they're not doing it with you in mind they're not choosing to cough and they're not choosing to sneeze they're not choosing to have a runny nose and you could say well they keep blowing their nose and wiping their nose well it's that or do you want to watch them with snot dripping down their front I mean you know reality they're doing it because they kind of have to also there's another side of it so there's like where's the compassion that person's unwell you know it's not nice to have a cold in fact it's horrible especially someone with flu it's just you know it's really bad it's very dangerous for people that are, uh, got you know that are maybe elderly or got some kind of physical issues that uh, 
make them vulnerable to the flu germ or whatever it is. But it's worth remembering, remember, not everybody, <clears throat> excuse me, not everybody that's coughing is coughing because they've got a cold. Not everybody's sneezing because they've got a cold. Huge amounts of people have allergies, hay fever. Many people have physical conditions that causes them to cough. Ill illnesses, diseases um, that have nothing to do with colds. They might have lung, you know, lung uh, diminished lung capacity. They could have all kinds of stuff going on. A chest infection. That's not a cold. It's a completely different thing. So it's kind of like, okay, where's the compassion towards your fellow human? And if you're like me, you might think, yeah, I'm okay, fair enough. But do they have to come near me? Do they have to sit next to me on the bus? Or do they have to sit near me on the bus? So long before this uh, coronavirus and stuff came into the news, I was, I've always been quite vigilant. Uh, and, you know, if I go into a supermarket and there's five cashiers and one of them is blowing their nose or sneezing, coughing. I don't go to that cashier. I don't care if I have to wait 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you know, behind someone with a cashier with four big shopping trolleys. I won't go near the person that's sneezing and coughing because it just makes logical, it just it sense, makes sense to me. So, but that's a choice. But at the same side, or a different side, I've sat next to someone in an office who had a full on blown out cold and I didn't get ill. And then my manager had a full on cold and he was sitting opposite me on the desk. I didn't get ill. Didn't affect me at all. So just because someone's got a cold doesn't mean you're going to catch it, even if you're right in their proximity. Doesn't always work that way. It's not quite as simple as that. But there are ways, as I said, of reducing your stress levels, possibly increasing your immune system. So, which is like an amazing thing. Uh, for this, though, I'm just going to focus on the the stress level aspect of it, reducing the stress level aspect, and feeling compassionate towards them. For me, helps. It helps in a sense of well, you know what, they're coughing they might have a lung disorder, a serious illness, which is why they're coughing. I can't catch that. And then my, my brain changes the way I think about that person. So instead of being, you know, red alert, red alert, and it's more oh I kind of want to give them a hug I don't really want to touch them but you know I kind of want to I feel kindness towards them so instead of thinking of them as a leper you know I think of them as oh that's terrible and I maybe then compare that person to someone from my life in the past that maybe has been really really ill 
and you know then it brings the compassion and I'm no longer thinking of myself I'm no longer the center of the universe just for a short while and then I get back to become the center of the universe again and some stuff that I found is useful and I did this a lot when I was going to college I had to get on the bus every day well I could have walked but it was a long walk so I was getting on like two, three, four buses a day sometimes and there'd be people coughing, spluttering, sneezing blowing their nose on the bus so what I did I started doing visualisation techniques and for me it worked okay uh, my stress levels it not only went down but I actually felt stronger I felt invincible so what I did I don't mean invincible as in you know I could take on a lion but I felt like my immune system had strengthened that's how I felt and I didn't feel afraid uh, there was no paranoia but at the same time there was no compassion either so I'm just put, I'm just being honest you know when I did this technique it wasn't about compassion um, but maybe the compassion could be the lead up to this so I was focusing on myself and what I did I just realised actually something before I go further I don't know if you can hear it there's some birds in the attic and I heard this I was listening to a recording the other day that I'd made it's just the beginning and it's just like this high pitched kind of squeaky noise and I just realised it's the birds in the attic they've got a nest up there I don't know how many of them are up there but anyway here's the technique So first of all, what I would say is I would never, I'd never sit next to someone that has a cold. On the, if, you know, generally, regardless of stress levels or anything, just logically, kind of keep away from them, really, if you can. Um, that's how I feel, because it makes sense to... Um, and also the self-isolation which is being recommended now by the government, self-isolation. For years and years and years, when I was at work, probably, I don't know how many years ago, 15 years ago, I decided that I was never going to work while I was ill. Um, with a cold, that is. I decided that's it. It was... Yeah, about 2005 and I've decided that's it if I have a cold I'm having a week off because I don't want to spread it to other people and I was working in an office with air conditioning and I might as well have just gone around just spitting in everyone's mouth seriously it was just it, people are going to catch it from me so I purposely self-isolated for a week and had a week off ill the problem with that is if you're self-employed it's very difficult to do something like that I had a chest infection when I was self-employed and I couldn't work for I think about 10 days and it, I, couldn't, I couldn't get out of debt it put me into so much debt those 10 days of not working that I actually had to have help from family to get back out of debt 
because it put me so far behind and I was earning such a small amount of money as well. So I understand how some people would say, well, I have to work. But then those people are going to be spreading it. So it's, 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 a, it's a very difficult situation for a lot of people. So here's the technique. <laughs> Eventually I'm going to tell you the technique. What I do, if I'm on a train or a bus, and this can be extended to other situations, but I imagine that I've got a barrier, almost like a force field around me, impenetrable. Nothing can get in. I don't know why I'm explaining what the word impenetrable means, but... And I don't think I've ever used that word before in a recording. Nothing can get through it. No germs, no bacteria, nothing. And then at the top of your head, there's a tube that goes all the way up. Way, way up into the sky where the pure air is, where there's air without any kind of pollution or any germs, and you've got pure air coming in. And in addition to that, you've also got healing coming in from the sun, mixing with that pure air, so the healing energy is coming in through the top of your head filling your body up with healing energy healing and rejuvenating your body and increasing and improving your immune system and at the same time as you've got that barrier up to protect you against outside germs you can actually feel yourself feeling more relaxed just just right now I feel myself feeling calmer I can always get a sense like down my spine very tickly yeah, almost uh, tingly kind of feeling going down my spine and I feel almost a bit tired as well so that's the focusing on yourself bit So now, what you can start to do is you can start to spread that healing energy like rain. So although that healing energy is going into your body, it's also starting to sprout out at the top of your head as well. And landing onto everybody's head on the bus or on the train and that healing energy raining down on all of those people healing them from whatever germs or whatever illnesses they have it's sinking deep into them and healing them And you can have a vague kind of spreading of this healing energy. But what I like to do is focus on the person that's coughing or sneezing and give them special attention. And imagine they've got a very similar border and barrier around themselves as I have. And having that healing energy going right into the top of their head so that barrier is stopping them germs getting out to anybody else but at the same time that healing energy that's going into the top of their head is filling their body with healing and getting rid of those germs and the oxygen the fresh oxygen from high up in the sky is going into their lungs 
helping them to breathe easier, helping to clear out their sinuses and their lungs, and that healing energy is moving into them, increasing their immune system. And if there's time, you could do the same thing for everybody on the bus or on the train. So you've got your own, it's almost like everyone's got their own cocoon that they're comfortably sitting in. With that healing energy being pumped inside there and that fresh oxygen filling their lungs, clearing their body of all kinds of germs and bacteria that's not necessary for their well-being. And at the same time, you can feel the experiences that you're feeling. And at the very least, at the very least, what happens is your stress levels reduce, your relaxation levels increase. Your relaxation sessions. And levels and feelings and experience within your body and mind spreading through you feels so calm knowing that wherever you go You've got that protection, that physical protection against those germs, which means there is nothing to worry about. You can just feel relaxed and calm, knowing that your immune system is strengthened to deal with whatever occurs. Now, that's just an idea. Maybe give it a go if you fancy it. The next time you feel that way, and you don't have to be on a public transport, bus or train or plane, you could have the energy part, the healing part, the fresh oxygen part coming into your body just by sitting at home on a chair maybe think of someone else that perhaps needs that as well and imagine them having that experience too now that's the end of the recording thank you for listening Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.